Rami, we never see you here. You never leave your bubble from the third floor. I know. I have that horrible feeling. <laughs> All right, good afternoon. Um, as the Secretary General made it clear over the weekend, the United Nations is taking swift action following the extremely serious allegations made against several uh, staff members from UNRWA. The contracts of those staff members directly involved have been terminated, as we told you on Friday. An investigation by the UN's Office of Internal Oversight Services was immediately activated. Uh, the Secretary General has remained very active on this issue throughout the weekend and this morning. A few moments ago, he met with the Under Secretary General Head of OIOS to ensure that the investigation will be done swiftly and as efficiently as possible. Uh, any employee involved in acts of terror will be held accountable, including through criminal prosecution. And as we said, the Secretariat is ready to cooperate with a competent authority to prosecute the individuals in line with the Secretariat's normal procedure for such cooperation. The Secretary General has also been engaging with the UNRWA leadership and donors uh, to UNRWA, as well as regional leaders, such as King Abdullah of Jordan, who he spoke to a short while ago, and President Sisi of Egypt, uh, with whom he will speak uh, a bit later this afternoon. Uh, the Secretary General is personally horrified by the accusations against employees of UNRWA, but his message to donors, especially those who have suspended their contribution, is to at least guarantee the continuity of UNRWA's operations, as we have tens of thousands of dedicated staff working throughout the region. The dire needs of the desperate population they serve must be met. At this point, the outlook for UNRWA and the millions of people it serves, not only in Gaza, but also in East Jerusalem, in the, we in the West Bank, Jordan, Lebanon, and Syria, is very bleak. Um, the Under Secretary General for Humanitarian Affairs, Martin Griffiths, um, said that the people of Gaza have been enduring unthinkable horrors and deprivation for months. In a post on social media, he said their needs have never been higher and our humanitarian capacity to assist them has never been under such threat. Uh, we need to be at full stretch to give the people of Gaza a moment of hope. Now is not the time to let them down, he said. In Khan Yunus, uh, in southern Gaza, heavy fighting was reported near the Nasser and Al-Hamal hospitals, with Palestinians reportedly fleeing the overcrowded town of Rafah despite the lack of safe passage. Hospitals in Khan Yunus are at risk of closure due to intense hostilities and the issuance of evacuation orders in surrounding states. The seven partially functional hospitals in the south of Gaza are operating at three times normal capacity while facing critical shortages of basic supplies and fuel. Um, also, the World Health Organization reports that only 14 of 36 hospitals in Gaza are partially functioning, including seven in the north. Humanitarian partners continue to report obstacles to their attempts to access the northern and central parts of the Gaza Strip. These include excessive delays for humanitarian aid, convoys before or at Israeli checkpoints, and heightened military activities in central Gaza. Frequent threats to safety of humanitarian sites and personnel uh, are also impeding the delivery of time-sensitive and life-saving aid. Uh, turning to uh, the situation in Abye, uh, I have a statement and it tells you that the Secretary General is deeply concerned by the violence that occurred over the weekend in Abye administrative area, which resulted in the tragic death of numerous civilians and attack on the UN peacekeeping force there, during which two of our peacekeepers lost their lives in the line of duty. The Secretary General conveys his deepest condolences to the government and people of Ghana and Pakistan and to the families of the deceased civilians. He condemns the violence and attacks against the peacekeeping force and calls on the government of South Sudan and Sudan to swiftly investigate the attacks with the assistance of the peacekeeping force known as UNISFA and to bring the perpetrators to justice. He reminds all parties that attacks on UN peacekeepers Keepers may constitute war crimes. Turning to Ukraine, our colleagues from the Office of the Coordination of Humanitarian Affairs tell us that attacks today and over the weekend are causing further suffering for civilians already enduring harsh winter conditions. 
In the eastern part of Kharkiv, authorities said that shelling caused damages to homes and electrical grids. And in the southern area of Kherson, attacks over the weekend also damaged homes, as well as education and telecommunication facilities, according to the uh, governor of the oblast. We, along with our partners, continue to provide urgent humanitarian assistance to people in these areas. On Friday, the humanitarian coordinator in Ukraine, Denise Brown, led a uh, convoy to the Kherson region. It delivered food, medical supply, winter clothes, solar lamps, hygiene, and children's supplies to about 800 people in need. Um, another convoy that arrived in the Kharkiv region on Friday brought blankets, bottled water, solar lamps, medical supplies, and hygiene kits, supplies for people uh, with disabilities, and construction material to repair damaged homes. Overall, last year, we, along with our partners, sent over 107 humanitarian convoys to support some 400,000 residents in the frontline areas in uh, eastern and southern Ukraine. Our Deputy Secretary General Amina Mohammed uh, was in Rome this morning where she spoke at the Italy-Africa Summit. She called for transformative investments, equal and inclusive partnerships, and international cooperation for the African continent. To support the sustainable development across Africa and beyond, she said, our international systems need a refresh so that they are fit for the 21st century, Amina Mohammed said. On the sidelines of the summit, she met with Antonio Tajani, the vice president of the Council of Ministers of Italy and also Italy's foreign minister. Um, yesterday in Rome, she also met with the government, other government leaders and ministers, including the president of Italy, Sergio Mattarella, the prime minister, Giorgia Meloni, and the president of Senegal, Maki Sall, who was in attendance. And she also met with the leadership of FAO and the chairperson of the African Union Commission, Musa Faki Mohammed, and representatives of the World Bank and African Development Bank. She is on her way home. Uh, just want to flag that this morning, as you know, the Security Council held a briefing uh, on uh, uh, Sudan, and they heard from the prosecutor of the International Criminal Court. This afternoon, 3 p.m., they will reconvene for closed consultations on peace and security in Africa. Uh, and they will hear uh, from Hana Tete, our special envoy for the Horn of Africa. Uh, as moving to the Democratic Republic of the Congo, the humanitarian coordinator there for the United Nations, Bruno Le Marquis, expressed his deep concern over escalating violence in the town of Mweso, which is located about 100 kilometers from Goma in the province of North Kivu. In a statement published today, Mr. Le Marquis said that while dozens of civilians uh, excuse me, with dozens of civilians killed, the humanitarian community in the country is disturbed by the serious violations ongoing there, including violations of international humanitarian and human rights law. He reminded parties to the conflict of their duty to protect civilians, guarantee the safe safety of humanitarian workers, and to ensure that assistance can reach those most in need. The humanitarian impact of the latest intensification of violence has been alarming. Some 8,000 men, women, and children have been displaced and sought shelter near Mueso Hospital. Overall, more than a quarter of a million people, 250,000 people in the Mueso Health Zone urgently need humanitarian assistance. And our colleagues in Rome at the International Organization for Migration, excuse me, they're in Geneva, uh, today said that nearly 100 people have died or disappeared in the central and eastern Mediterranean since the beginning of 2024. The toll is over twice as high as the figure for the same period of 2023, which was the deadliest year for migrants at sea in Europe since 2016. According to IOM, the annual number of migrant deaths and disappearances in all, med all of the Mediterranean jumped from 2048 in 2021 to 2,411 in 2022 and 3,041 by the end of last year. IOM, together with other UN agencies and humanitarian partners, is working on recommendations to provide humanitarian assistance to migrants in distress and tackle the tragedy of all those who risk their lives. And I have a question, a little quiz for you before we start the serious part. Uh, two more countries on the honor roll have paid their dues in full. The first is the only Afri member state from Africa to primarily speak Spanish. What is the uh, capital of Equatorial Guinea, since Malibu. you're so smart? Malabo, excellent. And we also want to thank uh, 
a very European nation that has uh, no fewer than three official languages. French, let me finish. <laughs> this was a quiz show, you'd be disqualified. Languages are Dutch, French, and, and German, or Flemish, French, and German. There you go. So we thank our friends in Malabo and Brussels for their money. Edie. Uh, thank you, Steph. Um, first, um, follow-ups on um, UNRWA. Um, you mentioned some people that, uh, high-level people, that the Secretary General has or plans to talk to, but you didn't mention the names of any of the major donor countries, the United States, the European Union, and Germany. Um, has he spoken to any senior officials from any of those? Uh, uh, he, met with, uh, he met with the permanent representative of the US this morning, and he will be hosting a meeting uh, here in New York with the major donors for UNRWA tomorrow afternoon here. And um, 20 NGOs put out um, a letter today um, urging continued support from uh, major donors for UNRWA. Um, does the Secretary General have any reaction to that letter? Well, we, we, we welcome uh, the messages of support. I think people in the NGO community understand the critical work uh, that UNRWA does in right now in keeping people alive, uh, in the delivery they have, uh, the deliveries they have made since the beginning of this conflict, but more broadly in all the work that they do, as I said, not only in Gaza, but in, uh, in the West Bank, in Lebanon, Syria, and Jordan. And one last question. Mm -hmm. I see on the schedule that Sigrid Cog is going to be uh, briefing a closed meeting of the Security Council tomorrow morning. Are, is she, are we going to get uh, to talk to her at all? Uh, the plan right now is for her to speak to you and for you to speak to her after she's done with the Security Council. Fatih, please. Uh, thank you, Steph. Uh, back to uh, Onrwa and the Secretary General's statement. He said that any employee will be held accountable, including uh, criminal prosecution. May I ask which jurisdiction? Because I don't think in this milieu it is uh, an issue to, to extradite uh, those who might have been involved criminally to Israel to be tried there. And uh, in Gaza, I don't think that they have the infrastructure. Yeah, I think those things will become clear as time goes on. The UN is not in the business. We don't extradite uh, people, but I think let's the investigation run its course. Okay. Uh, another thing on the funding uh, of UNRWA. Uh, did the Secretary General consider contacting the countries which is known to be funding Hamas covertly? I'm not going to mention names uh, to fill in the gap. Uh, for the countries that have I think any, uh, any, the, any member state that has the financial resources to support UNRWA, we would call on them to support UNRWA. <coughs> Pam and then Deshi. Thank you. Um, as you can imagine, a little more follow up on this. Um, in terms of the investigation that you talked about, mm -hmm. which has not formally begun but was called for by Lazzarini on the 17th, there are a couple of, there are two separate things. I think I'm glad you asked questions. We need to clear this up. Okay. There, there's okay. the OIOS investigation, right, uh, which follows uh, the news from, from Friday, right? Uh, they, they, are, they have started, they will work as swiftly as possible and efficiently as possible. Uh, previous to that, I think on the 17th of January, Philippe Lazzarini had called for a review of UNRWA and, and how, an independent review of UNRWA and more broadly how it works. And because as it, it's, it's, it's an open secret that they'd come from, uh, there's a lot of support from UNRWA, but there is some, there's some criticism as well. So he was saying, let's have a review of a work, how we work and to do it transparently. So that has, that's still in the in the process of being, uh, let's say, 
organized. And as soon as that, there is a process for that, we will let you know. But that's okay. separate from the OIOS one. All right. And um, are either or both of those investigating the dozen allegations? Yes, of the OIOS one. I mean, OIOS, and it, it, OIOS investigates misconduct or potential or alleged misconduct by, by UN staff. All right. But you, one of the statements mentioned the dozen yeah. Um, is there also the 190 that are mentioned in the Israeli document? Well, I mean, document? we've seen, you know, we've seen this uh, reference to a dossier. Uh, we saw it in the in the Times, in the Wall Street Journal, in CBS. in, in, in CBS. Uh, I'm not going to name all the media organization, <laughs> but we respect them all. Um, that information has not been uh, given to us uh officially by by the israeli authorities all right wait, wait, wait just uh, one more i yep. have counted 17 countries that have suspended mm -hmm. their aid to unra is that correct uh i can give you that uh soon soon enough all right and just what is your oh what would your message be there are congressional hearings on this tomorrow in the united states there's questions all around the world what's your message about continuing uh, support for the United Nations despite these things happening under its nose? I think we, c we, c we have to be ca capable of doing multiple things at once, right? Uh, the, the critical humanitarian work that the UN does, not only in, 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 uh, in, in Gaza, all over the region, needs to be supported. People's lives depend on it. We are doing in parallel, taking very seriously all the allegations that have been made. We are, uh, we are being forward-leaning. It was UNRWA that announced this, right? They took the first step. Uh, they had briefed critical donors. Uh, they had briefed certain parties before that happened. They were given information. They took the steps. Um, so we have a process of accountability that's, that's going on. While that's going on, People need to survive, and we need continued uh, support for UNRWA and all our humanitarian work. Deji. So I also have some questions. First, follow up on UNRWA. Uh, let me ask you by another angle. Uh, first of all, I believe you said there are 30,000 staff of UNRWA. Just about, yeah. Yeah, so 12 out of 30,000 with, with this, uh, over se about 17 countries suspend their foundings to this this very important organization which is supporting the humanitarian work in Gaza. Do you think that's fair? Listen, I, I'm not gonna label, uh, use words for what they've done, but I would refer you back to what the Secretary General said and what I said on his behalf, that he is appalled and horrified by these allegations. Action has been taken swiftly. At the same time, the people that UNRWA serves need our continued support. Exactly. That's what I'm going to ask. And that's his uh, message. That's his yeah. message to donors. So, so according to your calculation, I mean, to the the UN calculation, if there's this big suspension of funding, how much how much time do you have to, for for uh, to to offer your help? I mean, with past the, with the uh, right now, I think uh, past February. Uh, looks like they will run out of money. And, and another, another part of this is, now Israeli government officials have, has already started to cancel their meetings with UNRWA uh, chief. From this point of view, what can you expect that UNRWA would do? I mean, to effectively helping Gaza people well, to I mean, cooperate Anwar, with today, the Israeli government? Well, I mean, today, UNRWA is, you know, we have our 13,000 staff. Uh, they are, you know, the bulk of them are continuing. Uh, to work and to do whatever they can. We've got more than a million people in UNRWA shelters that are continuing to be uh, to be hit. So they're continuing to do their work. So, okay, uh, another topic. Uh, there is a there was a Gaza resettlement conference in Israel, which organized by far right far right wings um, organizations. But some of the Israeli government officials also participated in that in that conference, which called, I quote, settlement brings security and victory. What is the UN's position on this possibility of well, bringing I, I'm settlements not, I, to the, Gaza? The UN's position is that settlements are illegal under international law. We've also seen statements uh, from the uh, defense minister, if I'm not make, mistaken, uh, contradicting or saying the opposite of what was said in that meeting. I'll, I'm, let me move on. If to some, and then we're good.
uh, thank you. So for, first, just to clarify something you read and the Secretary General said regarding him, um, sorry, strongly appeals to governments that have suspended their yeah. contribution to at least uh, guarantee the continuous of UNRWA yeah. operation. What do you mean by that? Is this the difference between the basic? Uh, yeah, I mean, to, just to, to ensure that, you know, maybe things are suspended in the future, but to ensure that there's continuous cash flow uh, to UNRWA. So um, my other question is, given the fact that many of these countries who suspended um, uh, their donation to UNRWA, uh, on the top of that, the US, uh, there are also countries who are uh, strongly uh, support and involved in uh, weapon delivery, in diplomatic uh, support and political support to the Israeli government. Does the Secretary General believe that these countries are, um, um, what they are doing uh, is also a collective punishment to the Palestinian people, the civilians who had nothing to do with this issue? Uh, I'm not going to, I may not use that exact terminology, but I can tell you that um, I think the, the, the civilians in Gaza who are suffering uh, need the continued support of everyone. I, sorry, one last one on the budget I mean, issue. Given the fact that uh, the, the, the budget issue of UNRWA is a constant uh, under constant discussion and UNRWA has been uh, under attack uh, by Israeli government and other governments for a long time and uh, we saw back then during the Trump uh, presidency that they almost totally stopped their financing for UNRWA. Why isn't the Secretary General trying to uh, have, at least for the basic budget of UNRWA, to uh, have uh, the budget not based only on donation, but part of the... Uh, assessed? Yeah. I mean, part of UNRWA's budget is based on assessed contribution, uh, but how that the, the, the decision of the budget is, is with member states. That. Sorry. I, I, we, listen, we would like to have more predictable funding for all our humanitarian operations, right? I mean, as you, as you see, we, I mean, I know you pay attention to what I say here every day. Uh, how many times do I mention a humanitarian operation, say we're only 25 or 30 percent uh, funded? It is very difficult uh, to do long-term planning uh, with that kind of funding. Yes, ma'am. Um, the European Commission said today um, it will review whether they could... Sorry, I don't know. Uh, if you could just tell me your name. Sorry. Yeah, Sara Rancaño from the Spanish Public TV. Yes, hi. Uh, hi. Um, the European Commission said today that um, it will review if they could continue to fund mm -hmm. the UNRWA uh, in light of uh, the very serious allegation against some staff. And uh, it also requested um, UNRWA to allow EU experts to audit the, the agency and call for a review of all UNRWA staff. Uh, two questions. First of all, um, Will uh, United Nations comply with these two requests from Europe? And second question, since the European Union is one of the largest donors, um, what would it imply if it freezes contributions? Um, is the existence of the agency at stake? Yeah, of course. I mean, the, the, it's so much the existence of the agency is at stake. It's the lives of the people that the agency serves that's at stake. Um, the European Commission is a critical partner and donor to, to UNRWA. Uh, I know our colleagues in, uh, at UNRWA and uh, Mr. Lazzarini and others are meeting with the donor representatives all the time in, in Jerusalem. We are open to answering any and every question uh, that they may have. Mike, and that, sorry. I'm saying that UNRWA will, is, is willing to answer and, and work with every donor. Mike, then Evelyn. Thanks. I wanted to clarify something you said earlier, um, that the UN has not received that Israeli dossier yet. Has the UN requested? That's correct. I've, they've been in touch. We have not, as far as I check with our colleagues at UNRWA, they have not, uh, they have not received it. But it's been requested. I, we're, we're happy to get any information that they have. I mean, we've, we, we obviously read the, the media, uh, and our UNRWA colleagues are in touch with their counterparts, which is the foreign, foreign ministry, but so far nothing. Okay. Um, 
in a broader scheme, I mean, the mounting scandals at UNRWA, it's a financial albatross, and it's not going to get any better anytime soon because the expenses keep rising by definition. At what point does somebody at the UN say that the High Commissioner of Refugees needs to take over this operation and fold it in? I mean, what, what is the point of going on with this continual budget crunch year after year after year, the scandals year after year after year, when the High Commissioner for Refugees, a reputable organization that does this work all around the world, seems, seems able well, to, I, I to do this listen, work in, we, in we Gaza? Need to, Mike, we need, we need to go back into, uh, in, into history a little bit. UNRWA was created uh, in 1949 by a mandate of the General Assembly uh, for this particular purpose. UNHCR was created uh, after the adoption in 1951, if I'm not mistaken, of the International Refugee Convention. So the mandate that UNRWA has is a mandate given to it by the General Assembly. Any decision to change that mandate, to change UNRWA's raison d'être, uh, would have to come uh, from the General Assembly. But, but the, the but, but, but let, let's, 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 but, but let's, 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 uh, let's also be, be, be clear. Uh, the, the, the needs are not going to, the needs are not going to, to change. The situation is not, it would be, uh, would be the same. But the, the, these two organizations have mandates given to them by member states. If member states want to have those conversations, then they, they should. But it is not uh, for the Secretary General to just move these organizations and change, change their mandate. I'm not saying that. I'm saying what, the Secretary General has conversations with member states about all numbers of issues and budgetary needs and mandates. Why not this one? Why is this one apparently taboo? It's not that it's taboo. There is th the focus right now is on serving the millions and millions of people. Uh, I mean, the two million in Gaza and, of course, and the others uh, outside of Gaza who need who who need help. Uh, Evelyn then Dulce. Thank you, Stefan. Uh, can we go over the numbers again? It's thirteen. 1,000 staff in yes, Gaza, and how many people do they service? Uh, well, right now they're about, uh, they serve more than, a, more than a million. There are more than 2 million people in Gaza, but they're, I mean, the, I, I would also point you to the very uh, detailed UNRWA situation uh, reports, uh, which has the latest numbers, and those are updated daily. Uh, on the UNRWA page? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, okay. Uh, also, uh, you talk about the shelters. What was your point about the shelters? That My I'm point about the shelters is that they're overcrowded uh, and they're not safe. Right. Okay. And uh, I've got another one for you. Um, has the SG spoken to Netanyahu or will Netanyahu not take his calls? I think uh, you will all be the second ones to know when that phone call happens. Uh, let Netanyahu uh, take the call? I, I, you, as soon as the call happens, I will let you know. Uh, Joe. Uh, any news on approval of getting a UN delegation into northern Gaza to see what's needed for return? No, we, we've seen the, the reports coming out of the security cabinet. Those conversations are continuing to be had between ourselves, uh, our colleagues in, in Jerusalem and the Israeli authorities. As soon as it can happen in a, in a safe manner, it will. And we hope it happens quickly. Rami. And then, sorry, and then Dulce, sorry. Thanks, Steph. Um, what's the impact of the Israeli protests that have been happening at Kerem Abu Salem, uh, Kerem Shalom crossing? Uh, well, I think for two days it blocked the entrance of trucks uh, for parts of the day. And how is that impacting the wider humanitarian effort getting trucks Negatively. into Gaza? Negatively. Okay. Um, uh, the, another question, what's the UN position on the reduction in Gaza's territory? Because the Israelis are focusing or are insisting on uh, a buffer zone. Um, what's the UN position we, on we that? We believe there should be no, uh, no change in the borders of the Gaza Strip. Dulcie. Yeah, uh, I wanted to ask you, uh, Sigurd Cog's report, will that be made public uh, before she talks to us? Uh, I, will, I believe so, but I will check. Okay, so OIOS is doing an investigation of these accusations. Yes, ma'am. But they're, they're, I mean, what are they working with? Because uh, the dossier is not being made available to them. So, well, uh, so our, what are they, well, uh, let, how let, can they do let, an investigation without they, this is information? Day, let, let, 
This is the first working day. This is day one. Uh, OIOS will do its investigation as they, uh, as they will always do. They will be in touch with member states, and we hope that every member state uh, and other entities cooperate fully with them. But I can't speak to, uh, I can't speak to what it will show. Yes, ma'am. Uh, and and uh, why are these uh, uh, UNRWA staff not given due process that they've been fired? I mean, I one is there, already there, dead. There is, uh, historically, uh, heads of agencies and the Secretary General uh, have the authority to, uh, to immediately terminate staff when they have, uh, uh, when they have information that leads them to believe that these staff should be uh, terminated uh, immediately. Obviously, there is a due process. They can uh, go through a process uh, that is open to all staff members. But just to be clear, the UN has not actually seen this evidence. UNRWA had uh, the inf had it was given information that led the Commissioner General to take this swift action. I, just one more question: Are the Saudis going to be at this meeting tomorrow as top donors? Uh, I will. We'll, I don't know exactly who will be at the table. Depends which donors. Uh, I don't, and I don't have the list of the top ten uh, or the top fifteen. Ephraim, please. Hi, Steph. Thank you. Uh, one quick follow-up on the EU Commission um, statement. They're also calling for a review of all UNRWA staff to be uh, lunch uh, to confirm that they did not participate in the October 7 attack. I, I think What's they, your they, response to that? Is that as an I said, we, we will too? do, we are in, in dialogue and we will do whatever we can to appease the concerns of donors. Okay. And we, of course, have those concerns as well, as the Secretary General said. Okay. Um, on the timing of uh, these new allegations against the 12 UNRWA um, uh, uh, workers, um, does the Secretary General see any connection between um, the ICJ ruling that a genocide may be underway in Gaza and this sudden I, allegation uh, that UNRWA is part of the October 7th attack? Uh, we have no control or comment on the time-space continuum in which we live. One last one. Is the Secretary General worried or concerned at all of a deliberate attempt to destroy UNRWA. We've been seeing the Israeli government being relentless in its attacks on this agency since uh, the beginning of, of the course, war. Of course, of course we're concerned about, uh, about attacks and about lack of funding against, uh, against UNRWA. Uh, let me see if there's anybody on the screen. Uh, Nabil, you have your hand up. Okay, thank you, Stefan. Um, so just to understand you correctly, uh, the SG has not seen the evidence that based on this evidence, a number of UNRWA employees have been fired, right? No, so that, no, what, he has no, not seen the, this evidence? Let me just put it this way. The, the information regarding the, the 12 what happened on, on you know, la late last week was passed by the Israeli authorities uh, to UNRWA. The Commissioner General took the decision as he is authorized uh, to do. He has obviously been on the phone with the Secretary General uh, a lot in the last few days. Your other qu question. And uh, also another question, are these allegations or information related to misconduct only? Or are they also related to other? I, I have no uh, more information to share with you on that beyond what we've already said. Uh, Abdel Hamid Mushfik, then Jordan. And, if, and Iftikhar. All right, Abdel Hamid, you're. Okay, we can't hear you, uh, Mushvik. Can't hear anybody. Uh, let's try Jordan, and then otherwise we'll stay in the room. No? Okay, uh, can't hear you either. Uh, Iftikhar? Uh, thank you, Steph. Uh, the American the coalition of American black church leaders have called for a ceasefire in uh, Gaza 
and also steps uh, calling for steps to uh, end Israeli occupation of occupied territories. Any comment from the secretary? I mean, no, we I've seen the I've seen the press reports. I mean, I, I I can only restate our position, which is a call for an immediate uh, humanitarian ceasefire. Uh, let's try Abdel Hamid again. Yes, can you hear me? Stefan? Yes, sir, I can hear you. Okay, thank you very much. I have two questions on UNRWA. First, normally the accused is presumed innocent until proven guilty. So these, these allegations against my staff, because the 12, one of them is dead and two are missing, but they not, the conclusion of the uh, investigation had not been finished. So why punish the whole organization for just mere accusations? They're not yet proven well, guilty. Uh, we, we are not punishing the whole organization. On, on, on the contrary, we are calling for donors to s continue to support the organization while we deal with these very serious allegations. This is not a criminal procedure. This is an administrative procedure. And there are cases within the UN administrative procedures where uh, a manager or the head of a unit uh, can dismiss uh, people based on uh, the information they, they have. It doesn't preclude them from them going through an internal process. Your second question, sir. My second question is about the 152 staff from UNRWA who paid the ultimate sacrifice of their lives. And there are 13,000 working in very harsh conditions, and everyone. You're muted. Okay, Abdel Hamid, we'll come back to you later. Let's try uh, Jordan, and then we'll go back to the room. No. Okay, no. Mushfik, go, go ahead, Jordan, go ahead. Yeah, you yeah. Can, you, can you hear me? Go ahead, George. Go ahead. I have uh, my, my question also uh, was on the same subject. Um, uh, one of uh, the sentences on uh, on the SG, uh, you know, statement says that we are willing to uh, to cooperate with a competent uh, authority in order to prosecute uh, the individuals. Yeah, that that, are, that question was asked earlier, and I answered it. No, the question they, 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 they were asking you, I hear, I hear it. I'm talking about what do you mean by competent authority? A competent authority. <laughs> a no Sorry. Uh, okay, I got your uh, it, let me finish uh, my, my other two smaller questions, if you don't mind, please. Uh, um, um, the human rights uh, rapporteur, Ms. Albanese, issued a statement on weekend uh, stating that uh, defunding UNRWA based on those allegations is actually in introduction to the ICJ ruling of... Uh, I, I, Jordan, I have, I, I have no comment on what the special rapporteur says. You know that. Do you have another okay, question? My, my last one. My, my last one. My last one. There are 1,476,706 and refugees, registered refugees, by UNRWA in Gaza Strip. There are 26, 145, uh, 26,000 uh, 26, or more were killed in Gaza. Do you know how many were refugees among those one million? We do not have the, people? we do not have disaggregation on the number of, of, of deaths. Uh, let's go to Mushfik, then, then, then we'll go back to the room because my, the sound is so bad, my head's about to explode. Uh, thank you, Step. Mushfik, Thank you, Steph. Can you hear me? Yes, can I can. Can you hear me, Steph? I can. I can. On, ba on Bangladesh, thank you. On Bangladesh, does the Secretary General align with the UN Human Rights Commission's call for the immediate and unconditional release of all political activists detained without charge or on charge, just inconsistent with the international human rights law? As you know, 25,000 was political as a matter of As a matter of principle, we believe that people should never be jailed for expressing their political opinion, uh, and they should be released, especially if not charged. Ibtissam, then Mike, then Deji, and then I think I will release all of you. Yeah, on the, yeah, yeah. your own. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. 
Uh, on your own investigation, are you going to um, publish the results? Uh, Regarding the, the the OIS investigations are not public uh, in full, but obviously we will transmit a part of that. Uh, we will make public whatever information we can. Okay. Also, there are some media uh, reports that um, that part of this information that was provided to you through uh, Israeli officials uh, were taken through interrogation of detainees. Uh, which could mean uh, that maybe also torture was involved in getting this information about what's happened. Are you aware of that? Did you see these media reports? No, Are you I taking mean, that I'm, into consideration? I've, I've no, uh, we have no information on that particular thing. Would you also... I mean, we, we have the information we have. Uh, it was found to be credible to act upon it right away. Mike. If the major UNRWA donors don't budge and they keep their funds suspended, will there be any movement by the UN to maybe try to get those donors to redirect those funds to the World Food Program or, or OCHA or another humanitarian? It's, organ is, that, is that a possibility? Listen, don't, donors do what they want with their, with their cash. But you can suggest. But, but, let, me, let, let, but let me say something. The, the, no other organization than UNRWA has the infrastructure to do the work that they do. It's not as if anyone else can come in tomorrow and do the work that they do. I mean, I've seen a lot of discussions. That's just not feasible in any way, shape, or form. Uh, Deji. Yeah, I'm going to leave Anwar there. No, not, not Anwar question now. Um, housekeeping question. Uh, housekeeping. Okay, yeah. UN housekeeping question. Uh, what, what is the situation of the, the financial status of the United Nations now? Not great. Not great. How, 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 how bad? We're, 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 we're I, I mean, very concerning I, I will, about the escalators. I will, share, I will share some information with you guys by email. I don't have that off the top of my head. I do know that it's not great. On that note, I bid you all goodbye.